Hey, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about my new EDC pistol. And we've kind of hinted at this pistol in my previous video talking about the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS. And now I wanted to go ahead and give you an update on that since I've had it, been carrying it for two months now. And that is going to be the CZ P10C. Now this pistol here has been on my radar for quite some time. We're going to dive into everything going on with this and talk about my setup and why I choose uh, to set this up the way I did and so on and so forth and get you all the specifics on it. Let you guys kind of dive in and understand why I wanted to run this one instead of the Glock 19. I've been a big Glock fan and have carried a Glock 19 for over six years and it was time for a change. Not that big of a change going from one polymer frame striker fired pistol to another polymer frame striker fired pistol, but at the very least I wanted to see what this one was about, give you guys my opinions so far just the, the initial impressions and go from there. The setup on this is going to be a little bit different, so we're gonna talk about that as well. Before we get into the video though, I wanted to thank everybody who has jumped aboard the channel. We've seen a lot of growth over the last couple of weeks, and I really wanna say thank you for swinging on by. A lot of you guys came over from Clayco 47s channel, and I really do appreciate it. But if you've been with the channel and are not subscribed to Clayco47, please swing on by, check him out, and jump on board his channel. It's a lot of fun. He does uh, he does a lot of great things uh, uh, over there, and I encourage you guys to check that out. Also, if you are new to the channel, I do have a Fit and Fire newsletter that I put out every Friday to not only show you guys what is going on with the channel, show you what videos have come out so you guys can stay up to date on that, but also get you guys some deals on ammo and uh, show you some training across the country as well. So swing on by, you can find it on fitandfire.com. I would appreciate it. Okay, so let's get back into the P10C. This is going to be the compact version and CZ has also introduced the full-sized version of this so that's going to be the p10f they have the subcompact which is the p10s and now they have a slim line like a single stack nine millimeter that's going to be the p10m so if you guys are interested in any of those they're all going to be relatively the same just a little bit different size uh, for you know different sized people i guess right this is going to be obviously the optics ready version i had a regular P10C uh, that was not optics ready. I bought that last spring to get some rounds through it and already knew that I was going to like it. But for my everyday carry stuff, regardless if it's my kind of compact or full size pistol that I'm going to carry or my gym carry, something a little bit smaller, it's got to be optics ready. I want to make sure that I'm able to easily put a red dot on it as well and I went ahead and chose the hollow sun 509t for this particular one also have the TLR 7a and that kind of rounds out how I set this up so let's get into talking about the top three things that everyone's concerned about when it comes to a pistol that's going to be the sights the trigger and the ergonomics Let's dive into all of those. This came with a really nice high-vis tritium field front sight with a blacked out rear. However, because I added the red dot, I wanted to move to these night vision optics ready iron sights uh, to uh, see what they're all about. I haven't had a chance to really look at night vision and so far I really do like them. Now, one thing I wanna caution you guys about is night vision has two different types of red dot style sights. They have the suppressor height sights, and then they have the optics ready sights. The optics ready versions are going to be a little bit lower, so it's going to give you kind of a lower one third. The bottom of the notch is going to end up being parallel to the bottom of the frame of the red dot. So that's going to give you kind of a lower one third co-witness. 
rather than more of a absolute co-witness with the suppressor height sight. So that is going to be the major differences on those. Something to keep in mind if you choose to order these, uh, these sights. The 509T has been a great addition to this. I really do like it. Uh, I like the concept of having a closed emitter. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in depth when we do a full-on video for the 509T. I have the 509T teamed up with the CNH Precision uh, plate, which is really, really nice because it takes up all that free space and locks it into place, making sure that there's not going to be any movement of this red dot whatsoever. So that's kind of what I've done. All right, so one of the great things about the P10C is going to be the trigger. That is going to be the major selling point when it comes to this pistol. And that's one of the major reasons why I went ahead and chose the P10C to switch over from the Glock 19. This thing is going to have a really solid wall, little to zero creep. I'm talking if there's any creep at all, it's like a millimeter or less, and then a glass-like break right there. Here's your reset. Really pretty short. It's about the same as a Glock, but I would say maybe a little bit shorter. I don't know, maybe not. And then here's your break again. No creep in that whatsoever. And that's really surprising for a striker fired pistol to have such a crisp break on that trigger. And that's something I really, really did like. And then moving on to the ergonomics, the ergonomics on this is going to be really, really nice. Very similar to like an M&P or maybe even a a 1911 grip angle, not as extreme as a Glock. So that has actually caused problems with me. I'm now having to relearn how to draw and find that, uh, find that red dot because I'm used to cranking my wrist a little bit more into the pistol to really get that front end down so I can find that red dot. And that's not working now. I have to really get back and practice. I've done a lot of dry fire practice with this particular pistol to make sure that I'm pretty consistent on my reps and finding that red dot. So again, something you're going to need to consider, especially if you've been with Glocks for a while and changing over to something like this, that's something to uh, keep in mind. It does have interchangeable back straps, but I really don't worry about that. I usually just stick with what comes with the pistol. Uh, and the texturing on this is going to be extremely aggressive. I would say even more aggressive than the Gen 5 Glocks, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I am 100% fine with a more aggressive texture that gives uh, a little bit more purchase in my hand and keeps that thing locked into my grip. Now, one thing I would have loved to have seen is a little bit more texturing up here on the frame to get your support hand in there and locked in on this pistol grip, but that's not that big of a deal and I can live without it. So let's talk about some of the cool features that this pistol has. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to have front and rear slide serrations. These are really nice uh, and feel really good, especially doing uh, your manipulations up front on the slide because of your red dot. Uh, you can still slingshot it really well, but I prefer coming up top just to do a press check or just to, you know, cycle the slide if I need to. The next really great thing is this uh, texturing that they have on the frame right here. That is a great spot for your firing hand to put your trigger finger right there. That is a good place to know that your finger is up out of the way. A lot of people recommend putting it just in the index port, and I agree with that as well. But if you're not that type of person and you wanna put it right there, that's a good way to know, hey, I'm out of the way. In addition to that, your non-firing thumb is going to land right on that as well to help you uh, try to mitigate recoil as you are presenting this pistol. So that's pretty nice as well. Uh, comes with two 15 round magazines. I had a spare one from my old um, P10C, the non-optics ready version. So now I have three magazines and I've been running 147 grain SIG V crown hollow points on this and have really, really liked it. All the controls on this are going to be right exactly where you want them. Your uh, magazine release is really nice and easy to get to. Same with your slide, slide stop, slide release, slide catch, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter to me because I really don't care. 
And so far, uh, I have really enjoyed carrying this pistol, but it is not for everyone. There's a couple different things that you're going to need to take into consideration if you're switching over to this particular pistol. Number one is everybody loves the trigger. Trigger is great, uh, but even with it having such a really nice crisp wall and a glass-like break, again, there you go, uh, it's a lot heavier than what you would expect from a Glock or any of the other polymer frame striker fire pistols out on the market today. Just keep that in mind, because if you don't like a heavy trigger, then this pistol may not necessarily be something that you're interested in. The other thing is, even though this came optics ready, it does not come with any type of mounting hardware. So if you're wanting to, you know, get this from the store, bring it home, throw on a red dot, it's not going to work. You're going to have to order a plate either from CZ's custom shop or find a plate from the aftermarket. Uh, I would highly suggest going with the CNH Precisions. Those are really, really nice. Again, they go ahead and remove all of the uh, space from that red dot, uh, and they have just about every type of plate that you would need for the red dot that you would put on here, uh, regardless if that's an RMR or, uh, you know, as you can see with the 509T here, you have to have a very special type of mounting setup. So there you go. The other thing I wanted to talk about real quick is how I've got this set up as far as my everyday carry, and that is with this holster from Legacy Firearms. Um, it's a new company to me. I have never really messed with any of their stuff before. And, you know, to be frankly honest with you, they are pretty much on par with uh, Tier 1 or even LES concealment. Uh, obviously, I would probably lean towards LES or Tier 1, but this has done everything that I've asked it to do. Uh, it is incredibly adjustable. Uh, they have some really nice uh, tensioning points for either your magazine or your pistol, and it works well. Uh, you've got your uh, claw right here, your concealment claw, and your clips end up being just fine. With this elastic band here in uh, the center, you have a lot of movement back and forth uh, and some tilt as well, and it's been extremely comfortable. Now, one of the things that uh, a viewer of mine pointed out on Instagram, if you guys are not following me on Instagram, swing on by and check that out, but one of the things that they did uh, point out was here, you've got some sharp corners, and uh, if I had any criticism of Legacy, I would say just get uh, that belt sander and smooth up those corners right there. However, I will say that in carrying this, I have not had any issues or any discomfort whatsoever, and that's to include some five plus hour road trips that I've taken. I keep this in my waistband the entire time and have had no issues or uh, no concerns about comfort as well. So very comfortable setup, uh, like I said, on par with Tier 1 or LES, and uh, check them out as well. Again, that's Legacy Firearms on the holster. So with that being said, this has been a very nice change of pace, I would say, for me to go to this pistol in comparison to the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS. Only got about 500 rounds through this and I've had a lot of fun, as I've said, shooting it. Obviously, I'm going to carry it a lot longer, get more rounds through it, and we're going to be running this in some competitions here in the future as well, so stay tuned for that. I will update you guys not only on this complete setup, but also, like I said, I want to do a standalone video on the Hollow Sun 509T as well. So there you guys have it. Sound off in the comment section down below. What is your EDC pistol? Have you decided to change your pistol from what you normally carry? Or are you the type of person that says, if it's not broke, don't fix it? <laughs> Sound off, let me know in the comment section. I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much again for swinging by and checking things out. I really do appreciate all the likes, comments, shares, and subscribes that I've gotten here. Uh, you guys are really supporting the channel uh, in more ways than you can think, and I do appreciate that. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.